what's up, Light Bright Nation? So today you have me. I am at the Magna Flow facility here in kind of San Diego-ish, California. We've got the new Drift Vet, the C6, up on the lift because we're doing some things today, as well as taking a whole tour of the facility because Magna Flow, yes, is designed and made here in the US of A. So we're gonna go over what we're doing with the vet while we're here. We're gonna also show you some really, really cool things that Magna Flow has going on in this facility because it's like a few hundred thousand square feet. The place is crazy, it's huge, and they do a lot of cool stuff that I didn't even know. I'm having my own fun today. As you can see, we have the new drift vet up on the lift because, well, we just put on a super sick exhaust system, but we're having a little issues. And this here is Rich. Hey. Rich is gonna kind of go over why we're having these issues with the exhaust, which is no fault of theirs. It's actually our issue, our fault. Hey, race car, man. Because <laughs> of race car. Uh, and how we're exactly we're gonna fix it. And what it is is drone, which is a very dreaded thing when you have a nice car or you have any kind of street or daily and you put an exhaust on it, you get that boomy noise inside at cruising speeds. Well, God forbid, just driving it around the track and even off areas, you can't even hear if you've got radio communications back at the pit you're trying to work with. Yeah. Anything that you've got going on with the car, it's basically impeding upon just communication. Really, it's, it's fatigue. It's what it does to your ears as you're going around and that's something that we're trying to tune out is those frequencies that are undesirable. Right, now, so our car has an issue and the issue is that we have long tube headers with no catalytic converters. It is it is a race car, it is a drift car, it is seeing all the time on the track, but their exhaust system was designed around having OEM or their own catalytic converter, your own high flow cats, and then the rest of the system, which was tuned without drone, but that doesn't work anymore because we have long tubes with no catalytic converters. Right, and, and really the system that you have on the car is our competition series system, and the competition series is for the person who wants more feedback, whether that's in the cabin, or outside and you're not regulated by noise things that a typical street legal car would be. So couple that to the fact of this being a race car with all race equipment on it, it really just changes how the system was designed and really, this system was designed also for the Z06 with much larger tube diameters. That's true, I forgot. So. I had them send me the Z06 <laughs> stuff. I have the smaller motor and it has more flow and, and different different characteristics. And it sounds pretty wicked, as obviously it, your video It show. does sound <laughs> insane, for sure. Or how can somebody fix this on their car? Your, all your new kits, like, get rid of that and they, there's a, like a kind of a new technology or a new thing that you guys are implementing. Right, so we're using quarter wave and Helmholtz chambers to get rid of drone. It's what we call our NDT technology and really it's a common combination of different things that we have, whether it's the packing of the muffler on the newer kits, using our NDT resonators, or which are Helmholtz resonators, as well as using some of our quarter wave pipes. Combining those to mitigate the sounds, the best way to describe it is if you have a set of noise canceling headphones, they use a microphone to listen to the sound, and it has a program that tells it these are the undesirable sounds, and then it has a speaker that creates the inverse wave and reflects it, and it kills those unwanted sounds. Well, that plane buffeting, that low frequency note on the plane, which is really what it was designed for, is the same thing as drone in a cabin. It's the low frequency note that repeats that really is not part of the experience. Right, so they're able to do that with these, and these aren't your typical resonators, like you said. There's no. resonators on the car right there. Uh, thanks, Drift Week. They're not that. They're not a pass-through resonator that has packing in it. Correct. A lot of people have called the technology that we're using like a J-pipe or a branch pipe because the flow remains entirely intact. We're going to leave all the pipes in place and basically we're going to create a branch that comes off, sends that exhaust pulse with that frequency, modifies the frequency inside of the NDT chamber, and then reflects it so back. Is it, is it like a pressure chamber? It's all about tuning the frequency in here. And what we're actually doing is creating the frequency that we don't want and sending it back to collide with that same frequency inside to remove it. To cancel it out. Sweet. So we're going to let these guys get to work. I'm going to show you the exhaust again really quickly now, and then we'll show you kind of what happens once they've done their R&D and got the stuff on there. Well, your ears are the ones who know the sound, so you're <laughs> yeah. going to be the ultimate judge of telling me whether or not what we did worked. It's the boom. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys saw the other install. I mean, it's super. It, it was super clean. Some of the tracks had rocks and whatnot. And this isn't even me from going off. This is that dirt road at Apple Valley Speedway that really kind of destroyed it. This isn't damaging this. I guess if it was bad enough, it could kind of mess up the packing inside. So this is the exhaust right now. Long tubes into an X pipe into two. What are those like 24 inch resonators? 
and then up and over the axle and out the back. The goal is to use this space in here to branch off on each side and hopefully get those chamber resonators somewhere in there. And then they make different sizes of them. So as you can see, they have bigger, smaller, longer, shorter. And so we'll do a slip fit and then we can literally slip them on, go drive the car and see what's going on. But that's pretty much it. While they're doing that, we're gonna go take a, a tour of the facility. So this really shows you exactly kind of what we're doing. So this is the through exhaust here, and then this is the branch off, and that's what's doing the tuning, getting rid of that drone. And so they kind of have a few different ones mocked up here. And you can see this is a Y that's gonna split off or go into one. Right now, the goal is he's uh, widening up the can. The goal is to kind of make it slip fit. So in case we need to use a different size, right? We need to go longer, shorter, to kind of tune that out. It makes it real easy to just slip it on and pull it off, but it's coming along already. Yeah, anytime that we have a vehicle where it's not a stock spec that we're familiar with, we're kind of guessing. So kind of like when we do in prototyping, we're not gonna make any finished welds, so a slip fit will give us the ability to go to a higher frequency, mid frequency, lower frequency, whatever's needed to make the sound uh, the way we want it. Sweet. So something real cool I wanna show you guys. This uh, bluish purple, what, what color is that? Blue. <laughs> well, a blue light scanner because that's the contrast color to the laser, which is actually something you can't see. So this is 3D modeling. So they have this on here. This is OEM something. Yep. They put some spray on it and then he's gonna spin it around and it literally is 3D imaging it. And then it goes from there to the computer. And then from the computer, they've got 3D printers over there that will literally print up a jig for that, right? Yep. Technology, <laughs> like I think it's super cool. Well, yeah, it gives us a chance to, one, model the exact product that's on the vehicle. Uh, two, gives us a chance to create a rapid prototype that doesn't require us to build a mechanical fixture for production. Right. In the event that we want to make some changes. So the cool thing about doing R&D on older vehicles, this is Kevlar converter stuff, typically four to six years old, is that we can consolidate designs. The OEMs only see up until the point, but maybe the next model of this, they made a design improvement. We can actually incorporate that and make it fit both models. So this is on wheels, yeah. it's there, and then they can just roll it right under the car and scan the whole tunnel. So they know they have exactly everything they need. So this will roll under here and it'll image, it'll 3D image the whole underside of the tunnel here. Then they can build the entire exhaust or like you said, they can make it dual purpose. Exactly. That's the one benefit we have in the aftermarket is, is if you look at our pricing and the availability, some of that is technological advances we have. Other parts of that are the way that the aftermarket parts have to meet compliance. But mostly it's just taking what we have as, as historical information for something that's three to five years old and combining it with new information to just make it that much more consolidated or better. So if you have an older car that has a catalytic efficiency code, you don't have to buy a $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 OEM catalytic converter. You guys actually make direct replacement yep. that will go in and meet your certifications. Right, so, so. Uh, the EPA has their own standard in California, the ARB has their own standard, which you have to apply for, which is actually a higher standard than the federal. When we get uh, a compliance for that, they issue us an EO, which means now we can make a aftermarket part that is legal for the vehicle, just like the original part. Right, and that's California. They actually have testing here to meet the California standard. So you get a way lesser price than an OE, yeah. direct bolt-on, and it meets the California standard, which is actually really cool. So here it is on the screen. So he just 3D imaged this whole thing. And then uh, one computer talks to another computer and it will literally print out a 3D. They've got, like I said, they've got the uh, 3D printers over there that will print out a jig for it so that they get all the dimensions right and can uh, go to production. So this little printer here, they actually have a little Kevlar spool right here. And Rich was just telling me, so usually 3D printing, like this is 3D printed. This is a super cool exhaust tip and 3D printing is just plastic on plastic yep. that's melted together. And you can see where we've glued them together to get the sample. We've printed the inlet and we've glued that in. And this just gives you a little bit of structure so we can go and emulate it. We can even paint these to make them look like body parts or the original metal. But what does that Kevlar string do? So that's where if we want structure, like if I hit this, it's just like plastic that's been laid, it's gonna fracture. So when we print the structure, it'll actually feed the weave through. And when we print, we can actually print and cross hatch or whatever we want to give it structure. So now we can actually use it to create either fixtures that are permanent or even devices and brackets and things that we might use for other reasons in so, manufacturing. So it's beyond 3D print. I mean, it's 3D printing, but you are literally adding Kevlar weave to it to 
make it a, a solid structure so it's, if you drop it or you crutch down on it, it's not gonna just crush it. We even make 3D printed press fixtures. So if we wanna press aluminum and create a heat shield, we can actually print the shape and then use the same structure and create sort of a honeycomb for structure and then put the weave in it. And we can actually stamp and clean a piece of aluminum over the top of plastic and form it so that we can actually make a heat shield. What? I didn't even know, I mean, I know about 3D printers. I know they 3D print houses now out of like these big concrete things that go around that, that does this. But what? Like that is, <laughs> it's, I, I'm just showing you guys super cool technology that's, and it's in these little machines. And you said you also have like carbon. Yeah, yeah so each of the weaves, this one is I believe the Kevlar weave, and this one you can actually read here, that's carbon fiber. We're printing a yeah. graphite based uh, polycarbonate in here. We can do any kind of uh, nylons and the uh, Mark Forge product is very, uh, very versatile, but we can actually pick the structure that we want inside and it's as simple as putting in a new spool. So again, Kevlar, carbon fiber, each of these is a spool of the material that we'll use. That's awesome. So while we're here, they do have a Bronco, a new Bronco on the lift. Now this is the 2.7 V6 twin turbo, yep. and it's getting their new exhaust system. And the reason I wanted to show this real quick was because it has the same thing on it that we're talking about for the VET, except you guys go a step further. This isn't just a can that's welded on. You actually have a bolt-on for what reason? We want to make this adjustable. Just because we think we understand what you want from your vehicle, we've tuned out the most common frequency uh, using the quarter wave technology as well as the Helmholtz. That gives us a couple different frequencies, but if you want more feedback from your vehicle or if the drone isn't something that bothers you or if you've changed gears or tires, you've now changed where your drone frequency is, it's tunable. That's why it's not welded. We give you the ability to put the cap on, which changes the length. You can put it on here, you can place it at the end of the muffler, and that effectively gives you three different tuning spots. And of course, you can just lengthen the pipe if you want to get a different effect as well. Everybody appreciates a different noise. Yes, exactly. Right? Which is why somebody came up with glass packs at some reason. <laughs> I don't know whoever thought glass packs was a good idea. 1930s, but so man. But somebody likes them. Right? Yeah. Well, Somebody it's, likes them. it's a classic sound, but at the same time, it was usually just a function. It's the technology wasn't there. So that's super cool. So Magnaflow isn't just like, okay, this is the system you buy. This is what you get in the story. It's actually a fully tunable for the end user. Yeah. And as you can see, the Bronco, we did go, this is our Overland series. So it doesn't have the fancy tip on the outside. We no, cut but it's it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Yeah. Uh, we made sure the angle is going to expel the gases away from the back of the car so they don't accumulate inside. Yeah. But we do have all of the uh, same features put into our Street Series with a more exposed muffler and dual tips, just in case that's the style that you want to go for. Because again, not everybody's taking their so vehicle you, off to the extreme. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, hopefully a lot of people are. We have a little surprise for you, probably on the Supra, on Britney Supra. It kind of lets you do even more than this, right? Yep. <laughs> so something else to look at, in line with what we have there, we've also developed that technology for the builder out there, if you've got a Chris at home and you like to fabricate yourself, uh, we've also got the XMOD modular muffler, which if you look at it is very similar to what you just saw in that Bronco. Same technology, our straight through muffler, and I do mean straight through. This is something that you're not gonna get restriction through. Oh, yeah. And this is the tuning side, so there's no perforation in that side. But from that, you have the same option. So we give you the turnaround pipe, we give you the Helmholtz chamber. We do one more thing though, and because it's a universal, just so that you can have some fun, we have a turn down that you put there that actually bypasses 70% of that muffler, giving you a little louder mode. So if you wanna just go out and play for the day, all it takes is a 15 millimeter on that one last clamp, and you get a louder car that's a little bit more fun, and then when you go home, tighten it back on there, put the rest of the anti-drone technology on there, and you're good to go. Oh, so you can make it super loud. So you're saying you can, yeah, so this is a whole XMOD builder's kit. You have your cap here if you want just the cap as well. That is super cool. So you can buy that and just throw that on anything and it comes in two and a half, three. Two and a half and three. Two yep. and a half and three. Pretty much most of the applications out gotcha. there. Gotcha. Sweet. So as you can see now, we're in the manufacturing facility. Most of what they do, 80% is catalytic converters. We just went through like the old assembly line of putting together these catalytic converters, which is super cool. But they also have a new process, which is automated, a lot like you saw at the Bilstein factory. And that's gonna be this whole area here. So there's 14 people at these stations that start and run all the way down the assembly line. 
to make those catalytic converters. Now, we're to here, which is all automated side. So now we've moved to, now, instead of having to have a stamped shell, a part that we have to weld, we've got a single piece of pipe, and what we're doing with the machines here is they're spinning it down. So it uses a rotary device that hits the material and starts working the metal down so we have whatever inlet. So we don't need to have the mechanical fixing, and we don't have all of the welding. Every time you introduce a weld, we're superheating the material, it becomes embrittled. Secondarily, you're also putting a potential place for a leak. Now there's zero leaks, and actually what we've done is narrowed it down and made more material fit in less area, making it thicker, and work hardening it and making it stronger. That's what she said. So this is how that part starts out, is literally this guy here that spins it down and turns that into a whole shell of it. So, like I said, there was 14 people that worked that whole assembly line, which they still need. This whole area, there's one. One, one person works all of this, because it's all automated, and he makes sure everything's just being fed right and the programming's right. So this here is the muffler bodies and, and stamping, which they all do in-house. Again, everything is here, it's made in the US. So there it comes off the roller, goes through a straightener, comes down through the cutter, and then gets stamped and cut, <laughs> that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is all done here in the USA, right here in California. Super awesome. What you just saw there was taking a five inch pipe and whittling it all the way down to that. You can also bend it. That's a five inch pipe that the cat goes into and then it spins it down and then you see the machine turn and it actually turns it and angles it so like for the application, which is that's pretty cool. You know, here they are, here's a whole bunch more. How much square footage is all that we just walked through? So you're looking at just shy of 300,000 square feet for manufacturing and shipping. 300,000, and you're saying also, they basically take in raw goods and it leaves in a box. Everything's done here, which is super awesome. And if you're between California and Texas, you can literally have the part the same day. There's an opportunity as long as you hit our time windows that we can do same day shipping. Right, so it's 11, by 11 a.m. California time. So by like Texas, Colorado, you can have the product same day. If it's like, I need this, right now and your wallet can bear the price and your wallet <laughs> well of course because it's literally leaving here going on a plane and making it to you same day but that's that's how quick they can do it on this half of the country yeah. which is which is pretty mind-blowing honestly well really stateside anything under three days and we're talking about rural parts of california midwestern areas of the states you name it we're going to have stuff there within three to four days and the worst case scenarios and almost everything you get with us is two to three days maximum i mean it's literally all done between there and over there and everything we just walked through i only showed you like 20 percent of everything it is crazy impressive what they do and then the r d is the whole other spot where you know the Corvette's at and the Bronco and all these other vehicles where they actually take them in and test it. So the muffler section you were saying was 20%. Yep. So the muffler portion is 20% and the 80% is catalytic converters. Yep. So which our is, performance division, which is what we're kind of known for, is still the smallest segment of our business. The majority of our business is in the tube bending that goes along and the fabrication that goes along with catalytic converters and kind of keeping all of our fun cars legal and fun. There you go. Look at that. Those little guys are on there. A little slip fit. There's one for each side. We're gonna go drive it and see what she sounds like. So the regular exhaust tone isn't gonna change. This is just supposed to get rid of the drone, which you're not gonna hear on camera anyway, but I'll drive it and I'll be able to tell. Okay, so we just took it for a drive. Can't confirm. It is still very bassy down low, down below 1700 RPM, but I'm never down there unless I'm at idle. You can maybe hear it, maybe it's picking it up, but it did completely get rid of the drone at the 34, 3500 range, yep. which is like where I was getting up to to shift, and at the 18 to 2200 range, which is where I normally cruise, which is why I had to come here, was because that cruise range on the highway, <laughs> instead of being in sixth, I had to be in fifth, so I was at 25 to 2700 RPM because that's where it didn't drone. 
but then I have no sixth gear unless I'm doing over a hundred something miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. So driving it around now, I can actually just drive around at 2000 RPM and it's great where before it was, Unbearable. it was boomy, but that was again, my fault. But thank you guys. He is a wealth of knowledge. I want to do more with him in the future because I didn't even capture a 10% <laughs> of, of the knowledge he dropped on us today because we were inside the factory. It was kind of loud. So we just kind of wanted to show you the factory today. It turned out great, but Rich, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can do that. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know Brittany and Jelly wasn't in this. Chris and Beck wasn't in this. This was just Kevin and Rich today hanging out, yep. doing, doing MagnaFlow stuff. But thank you. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Light Bright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. I think I got that right that time. I, you think yeah. you did? <laughs> Head on over to MagnaFlow. They make something for your vehicle, unless it's maybe all electric. Yeah, that's about maybe it. Maybe they're not doing electric vehicles. But other than that, you can head on over to MagnaFlow, check out all the cool exhausts they make, including the new Bronco. And I guess we will see you guys next time. Bye. Say bye. <laughs>